Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going to create a layout, a two-page layout on my art journal book. This is the Dilutions Mini Art Journal. And as the weather is getting better and better, I wanted to create something for spring. And that gives me the perfect opportunity to use this stamp set. This is a stamp set designed by Bipasa for All and Create. It's called Magnified. It is a big stamp set. And if you're wondering, this is an A4 sized stamp set for my European friends or a letter sized one for the, for the US. Now, I will be working with uh, this uh, magnifying glass for my page, but the rest of the images are great too for creating other pages in the future. I like the size of this stamp since it is quite big and it makes a great focal point for an art journal. So let's start by creating the background. For today I decided to go with my Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Paint and I'm using two of my favorite colors. Probably my most favorite of all times is Captain Peacock which I'm going to combine with Mermaid. I'm working with my brayer and I'm using my jelly plate as a palette. I'm not mixing the two colors together, I'm just starting with a darker one, applying it all over my page, making sure that I don't cover up everything completely. Using your brayer is going to give you an imperfect layer where the color is not going to look flat, so you will get some visual texture with no effort at all. This is the beauty of that technique. I'm also cleaning up my jelly plate here so that I can move on to the next layer. This time I'm working with a lighter shade of blue. And that's Mermaid. I'm making sure that I apply some of that ink in the middle there between those two pages. And uh, these two colors do not mix with each other. That's because uh, Fresco Finish Paint does dry super quickly, especially when you apply such a um, thin layer, which means well, that when you go ahead and do the same technique on top of it, the colors are not going to mix, which is exactly what I want to do. I am not going to use any other color, but if you like to create something similar, you can add as many colors as you like for a really beautiful effect with lots of depth and texture. However, you know I like to keep things simple, so I'm going to stop here. You can do this technique with any acrylic paints that you have at home. Just remember to dry one layer of paint before you apply the second one to avoid mixing the colors. And now let's do some stamping on the background. And I get asked a lot on how I like to store my stamps and if I repackage them, I don't repackage them, I just keep the original packaging since we don't really need more plastic. I just like to chop off the top so that I can slide easily the stamp in and out of the original packaging. So anyway, the stamp that I'm working with today is called um, Background Voices and it is a... Uh, um, Perfect little stamp set for backgrounds. It comes with many little stamps that have a merge of text and numbers and I find that they are really versatile. I'm not going for the perfect impression, that's why I'm using them just with my fingers and I'm working with archival ink, the color is cornflower blue which is slightly darker than my background so that you can still see the text. It adds some visual texture and interest at the background but at the same time it is very subtle. Now here I'm using a bigger stamping block so that I can uh, add on top three different stamps just for ease of use and I'm working with my Versamark ink. Every time I stamp something I'm going to apply my white embossing powder and if you notice my white embossing powders goes pretty much everywhere because the previous stamping with archival ink isn't perfectly dry yet. Again, keep in mind that nothing has to be perfect, just use your fingers and wipe off any excess that you don't want to hit set. I'm going to move on and do all the stamping and apply all the embossing powder all over the place without heat setting in between. And I can do the heat setting at the end in one go. Heat embossing is a great background technique, it's going to add some texture and at the same time you can uh, play with different colors of embossing powder in case you want to introduce a new color. Now here I decided to go with white because it gives that white highlight at the background and it keeps everything quite subtle. And if you follow my videos you already know that uh, I like to keep my backgrounds quite uh, subtle. I do a lot of techniques back there to add some interest but at the same time I don't want that to turn up too busy. I just like to keep my backgrounds exactly what they are, backgrounds. And here is a close-up look on how the background looks. I'm going to add some white splashes. 
Lately I tend to use this uh, spray paint bottle. This is by Altenew. I find it super easy to use as I don't have to thin down uh, my paint or my gesso. And uh, I'm going to leave this uh, aside to dry. And now it's time to work on my focal point. For that I'm going to stamp that big magnifying glass on a piece of white cardstock. I'm using my stamping platform here since this is a really big uh, stamp and I know I need to stamp it a couple of times to get a good impression. Plus my ink pad is uh, turning quite dry so I need to re-ink that. And now it's time to cut out the image. I'm going to use my crazy fuzzy cutting skills here. And I will go all around the flowers and the magnifying glass. I take my time. I don't rush through that. If you find that you end up in some areas that are really difficult to cut around, just chop them out. No one will ever know if you just left out a flower or a little leaf. So now I'm going to cut out the inside of my magnifying glass because I want to see through that. That's why I'm using my crafty knife. I like to create an X there and then I will use my scissors and go all around the inside. The idea is to replace the inside with uh, acetate. This way I will uh, turn it into looking more realistic since I will get that glare. Another way to go is if you cover up completely the inside with glossy accents, which is going to give a glare, but uh, you have to use tons and tons of glossy accents and I didn't want to do that. Once you have your image cut out, you can go all around the edges with a black marker. This is going to disguise any mistakes that you did. Here I'm using a Versamark marker. It applies Versamark ink only exactly where I need it to go. I'm just going around the main glass part where the glass should go. And I'm going to apply on top of metallic embossing powder. This is antique silver. It is going to stick only on the ring and this way when I hit set it, it's going to look metallic and it's going to bring that magnifying glass into life even more. And to tell you the truth, this is what I love about mixed media, the possibility to work with so many different techniques, to add so many different elements on your page, it really makes me happy. And now it's time to do the coloring. You can use any of your favorite mediums to add color on your focal images, but you do need to think ahead. So if you want to work with watercolors for coloring your focal point, then you need to stamp your image on a watercolor paper. This is going to ensure that it's going to look nice. So here I was planning to work with my alcohol markers. That's why I did stamp on Nina solar white cardstock. And uh, I'm working with my Trimblends here. These are markers that have three shades in one barrel. It makes my life super easy. I'm starting with the handle and for that I'm going with shades of brown. The marker that I used here is called Earth Brown Blend. And I'm going to use shades of this marker for the branches as well. For the leaves I went with the Triplend which is called Light Green Blend. And I'm mainly working with the medium and the darker shade. I didn't use the lighter one at all, I believe. And this is where you can use your green marker to cover up any mistakes from cutting out your or fuzzy cutting your image. There are little areas where I didn't uh, cut them out between the flowers and the leaves. Just color them uh, uh, green. No one will ever know that uh, it wasn't supposed to be a leaf there. I did use a third marker for the flowers. All the flowers were colored with the tree blend, which is called Pale Pink Blend. And now I'm going to add some glue at the back of the ring so that I can stick there an acetate. For that I'm using my Nouveau Deluxe glue. You can use any type of white glue that you know it's going to give a nice strong bond between the paper and the acetate. I'm going to use my scissors and chop off any excess of the acetate that I have there. And also remember to keep acetate from your packaging. We have lots of that. I like to keep them because I recycle them on my project. So here you can see it works as a glass. You can use them for uh, glasses, for cutting out wings, for butterflies. You can even use it for your shaker cuts. So many different ways to recycle acetate. 
Here is a close-up look on how my magnifying glass is looking. I think it is a beautiful focal point. It would work on a canvas as well. And uh, it would give the opportunity to have the flowers popping out, to have them uh, more dimensional. However, since I do have that magnifying glass, I want to have something at the back of it. And that's why I'm going to create a butterfly here. I'm just going to give to stamp a couple of wings and I will give my butterfly a body. At the same time, I did stamp uh, some of um, the some extra flowers from the magnifying glass, as you can see there. This is going to give me the opportunity to fuzzy cut a little bit more of that image so that I can stick it on another area of my layout. I did use my markers to color the wings and for that I went with uh, orange shades and uh, I did cut out that extra flower branch. So I'm sticking down the butterfly and then I'm going to place the magnifying glass on top and try to decide how I want the placement. Since I did use white glue I can easily move around the butterfly until I'm happy with the placement. I'm also going to draw a couple of antennas there and I did add some uh, white highlighting with my white gel pen but I lost that footage and now it's time to stick the magnifying glass on top and of course I need to cut it out where that seam on the book is. I always like to do that because I found that on my older art journals when I wasn't cutting out the um, focal points and I was just folding them at the end of the day after years of opening and closing the books they tend to lift up that's why I like to cut them out so that I can glue them nicely and know that they are going to stay put. Now in terms of composition, to make this look pleasing to the eye, I like to have uh, an element from corner to corner. Plus by having the same flowers, the same elements on both pages, it kind of brings them together and it looks as if it is part of the same image and not just another page. I'm going to chop off the excess uh, leaves but I'm not going to um, throw them away, I'm just going to tuck them underneath the flower in another position. And as I was looking at the background, I felt that it needed something extra back there. So I am going to bring in that huge stamp once more. And if you notice, it does have some lovely elements around the focal points that I did cut out. So there are some splashes, some lines. I am going to use those and stamp them around the image since I lost all that definition from cutting them out. I am also going to bring in the text stamps that I used for the background and this time I'm going to use black archival link to stamp those. This is going to add something more extra for the eye to look at. But I'm not going to stamp all over the place, I just want to have some of that here and there. Another trick that you can do here is to go on top of the flowers at the same time as the background. It is going to kind of bring everything together. Also notice that with that black stamping I'm mainly staying on the line from corner to corner or only at the edges. And it's finally time to bring out my white gel pen. I'm going to add some highlights on the leaves, on the flowers. I do have already added the highlights on the butterfly before sticking the magnifying glass on top. I don't pay attention on where the light source is, I just add some highlights here and there. It is a technique that uh, makes me happy and that's why I do it on all of my pages. At the center of my flowers, to give them more definition and some extra texture, I'm going to add some uh, nouveau drops. I'm using a white one here, but you can go with yellow if you want or even black. This is definitely a step that you need to do as a finishing touch, however, the moment I think about it, I just go for it, I couldn't wait for the page to finish, so I'm adding that, and then I have to be super careful not to touch those dots. Now, if you make a mistake, don't worry, you can just scrape it off and go for it again. I had some dots that they were touching and I didn't like them up there. And now it's time to add the quote. Now, if you notice in that stamp set just below the... Um, uh, magnifying glass there is a quote that says magnify the little things which is a lovely quote but I did want that to be larger for my page that's why I'm using an alphabet die set here to cut out and uh, spell the word magnify I did use black cardstock for that and I combined that with a sticker from a um, 
booklet by Tim Holtz to complete the phrase. I added my quote in between the flowers along the line from corner to corner. This way I keep the layout as it is without adding elements here and there. I like to leave quite often empty space and this way it helps the focal points to pop even more. I don't like the pages to be super busy with elements all over the place. I'm adding my highlights, which is something that I always do on my die cut uh, letters. And uh, I'm going to add uh, a couple of more phrases on top of my magnifying glass in black with white words. And these booklets really keep on giving. I have them for so many years. I use them again and again. And there is always a phrase that I find uh, it works for every project. So here I went with It's All Perspective. And look on the bright side. Again, staying along the line from corner to corner. Again, I'm going to bring in my white gel pen, add some highlights around those black stickers. And I'm going to add even more white splashes because you can never have enough. Here are some close-up photos where you can see the details better. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Don't forget, just like always, you will find the full list of all the products that I used down below in the description area. Thank you all so much for visiting today and spending some time with me. Don't forget to leave me a comment, to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you all next time. Bye bye!